Hey guys, it's Jackie from Jack Gets Lost Down of a Cult, and I have been thinking about this, about doing a video where I talk about some of the classics in literary fiction that I read. And, um, kind of, it's kind of like, kind of like what, um, it's a lot like what Murphy Napier does. If you watch her channel, she will do separate wrap-ups on the classics she reads. And I think I kind of like to do that, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, especially since I am trying to read more classics in literary fiction. The only problem is it takes me forever to read, because I don't just read the children's classics. I read the adult classics, like Dickens, and, um, I keep thinking about reading Crime and Punishment. Um, but this current, um, now, this current classic I want to talk about is one that's not that long, but it is not a children's book. And that is George Orwell's Animal Farm, which, by the way, I love this edition. It's so awesome. Um, and if you read the book, then this, you would understand why I think this edition is, like, perfect. A perfect, um, setup for the book. A perfect design for the book. Um, this is actually an anniversary edition. It's, let me see here. It's the 50th anniversary. So if by chance you aren't familiar with Animal Farm, this is a story about a group of animals who decide they don't like how their, um, their master is treating them, their human owner is treating them, and they decide with encouragement from one of their own, who dies in the book early on, that they need to take over the farm and down with the humans. Um, four legs good, two legs bad. That's their motto. And it's and it turns into kind of a totalitarian government kind of thing. Like the pigs end up taking charge, they end up being the smarter ones, and they start running things and, you know, coming up with all these crazy rules and changing the rules. Um and it's it's really it's a really interesting way to look at because it's actually a satire on communism. Which, it's really interesting, like, all the animals, like the pigs and stuff, all represent historical, you know, historical figures. Like, the main, um, the main pig who starts running things, I think he's supposed to be, like, Stalin. And the other pig that was joined, that had started things with him, but then they got rid of him, was Trotsky. I think that's how you say it. Um, I'm not good with Russian pronunciations. <laughs> Unless... But, um, but it takes, the like, author, actually, I mentioned, I just mentioned Crime and Punishment. I can't pronounce that author's name. I feel really bad, but I cannot say it. I keep trying to say it. I think I need to, um, take, like, a listen to, like, a Russian, like, one of those, what is it called? What's that company called? I can't remember. But the company who does, like, the, where you can learn an language, a language via audio instead of taking a class. Um, I've seen, you see this all the time. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, this is, this was such a fascinating read. I mean, not every, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but that's how a lot of classics are, I feel like. A lot of classics in literary fiction, too, are not going to be everybody's thing. I mean, some, you know, and I don't think it's anything wrong with if you don't like a classic or you rate it low on Goodreads or something. Like, I DNF Little Women because I could not get into it. I liked the movie, the 1995 movie starring Winona Ryder, um, Susan Sarandon, a young Kristen Dunst, um, Claire Danes, and I can't remember, Trini, Trini Avalard, Avalaro, I uh, can't pronounce her name, her last name. Um, I like that movie, and I like Joe in the movie, but the book was just so sentimental and cheesy and like very it like someone gave a description of it perfectly well they were describing the mother's lines in it everything that she said but I think it fits the whole thing it's a, like a Hallmark movie I mean yes I think if I had read it as a kid maybe I would have liked it better but as an adult I'm re I read it as an adult and I just I, I didn't like it I got halfway through and I was like okay I can't read this anymore I've lost interest um, so in, uh, so basically what I'm getting at is not everybody's, you know, not everybody class, everybody, every classic is going to be your thing. And that's okay, you know? 
I feel like, I mean, although it's funny that I say that because I always, I still feel guilty that I cannot read, I can't bring myself to read the original or the Rings trilogy, but yet I love the movies. But I really should take my own advice and not be all like obsessing and feeling guilty that I can't, that I only read The Hobbit and that I don't, and that I only, I prefer the movies. I mean, it's just, I can't get into the books. And I don't think I should feel bad for that. But anyway, so, um, but the, and this is definitely one of those books that it probably is not everybody's cup of tea. But I love how this book is written. It's like a chill, it's like a folktale or a children's story. And like I said, I think the fact that this looks like one of those big hardback children's books is really cool too. In fact, when I first saw it on our shelf, in our den, I thought it was a children's book because, you know, it had animals and stuff. I did not realize that this is a very adult book, but, of course, as a kid, you can read this book. You just won't understand the true metaphor in the book. I mean, to a kid, this would just be, like, animals behaving badly and, um, or trying, you know, trying to stand up to the mean farmer, you know? It's really, now I was, I was, I, I was a little confused by the ending, I remember, you know, it was a very weird ending. I was a little caught off guard by it. I didn't know if they were, if the author was being like literal or metaphorical. I mean, it was probably a metaphor, but the situation at the end, if you read the book, does feel very like, did they, this literally happen? I mean, going by the pictures, which by the way, this is, it's really cool because this not only is it written like a children's book. But there was an illustrator for this edition. Um, let me see. You can see there's the farmer. You can see it. Um, oh, stupid. The outer, the outer casing is coming off. Um, let me see. Um, wait. Here's. An, dang it! The stupid. The stupid. Like, here is a picture of the rules that the pigs have, the commandments, they call them. Whenever it goes upon two legs is an enemy. Whenever it goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend. Um, and they, like, have, you know, the, talks about how the spelling of the word friend is messed up. It's incorrect. And, um, it's... No animal shall wear clothes, no animal shall sleep in a bed, no animal shall drink alcohol. And it's funny, they got the S backwards in shall in that fifth one. Um, no animal shall kill another animal, all animals are equal. It's so interesting, one of the more, I think one of the more poignant famous lines in this book is, um, all animals... All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others, or, or or are more equal than others. Let me see if I can find it where it talks about it. See, here's another illustration. And I remember as I'm, I mean, I didn't expect it to end on a happy note, but I kept, I remember reading it, and I'm, I'm thinking, animal, I'm thinking, animals, you need to get smart. Where, why aren't you, are you going to get smart? You know, and realize the pigs are tricking you. But of course, you know, it wasn't going to happen, so, and I knew, I knew it was going to happen, I just, but I just, it's so, um, it's such an, it's such a disturbing book, and it's now, I say that a kid can read this, but it does get very violent. Like, there's an all-out fight between the humans and the animals, and the pigs end up killing the animals who question their leadership. Um, so it's not... So there are elements in it that are very disturbing and probably something that kids should not see. But like I said, if you were a kid reading this book, you would just think it was animals being mean or being bad. But I just think this is such... I, lo I do really enjoy... I'm really enjoying them... Oh, here it is. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. That's what it is. That's I think that's one of the more famous lines from this book. One of the more famous quotes. I that's what I should have put down. I should have put down 
Because I recently, on Facebook, in a book related group, there was one of your favorite bookish quotes. I should have put that down. That wouldn't be perfect. I should do that. Um, well, I can put it on my, on my group, in, in a status post or something. But anyway, this is such a fascinating, if you like political satire, and you like learning about politics via a more interesting way rather than reading a textbook or a nonfiction book that explain that states the facts about the historical events. I think this would be a really interesting book to read, a very entertaining one. That's why I like I love books that are, you know um like I love books that are like where they take historical events and like they it's facts, but they kinda of do a unique spin on it, like a fictionalized spin on it, even though they're stating facts, and they exaggerate things, and they change facts to fit the story, the narrative format. I really like those because it's a way you can kind of get an idea of histor of history, and, and you know, as long as you realize that this isn't going to be 100% historically accurate, it's a good way to learn about it. Um, like this, like I said, this kind of is a, a narrative of the events that happened in, I want to say it's in, like, 1914 is when it started. Um, so I really, um, I definitely rec recommend this class. It's an easy read. It will not take you that long to read. Because it's, like, ten chapters, and there are ten short chapters. And some of them are a little longer than others. And it did help. This format did help because... You know, it's, see that, the print is huge, you know, so it made it a little bit easier, and sometimes it does not help when the print is minuscule. I mean, the, the only, like, as I've said multiple times before, the only reason why I bring, buy mass market paperback is they're easy to travel with. Like, when you go places and you want to bring a book with you, and I always do that, so that's the only reason I'll bring mass market paperbacks. Um... But I, I love, I really enjoyed this book. You know, it's not a very happy ending, but I'm not one of those people who has to have a happy ending. Um, it, like I said, it really is an interesting way to look at histor a historical events and, polit and politics and what happened to Russia back in the, you know, back then. And I don't know if they're still communists, though. I don't know if they're still a communist country. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask my dad because he, um, he knows a lot about history. He really, that's, I think that's probably one of his, his second favorite subject, or, or is his favorite subject, but it's not when he majored in college, in college he actually majored, majored in geography, I believe, but he knows a lot about history, he studies, and he, you know, remembers a lot of things, so I'll have to ask him if, if communist, if Russia is a still communist country. So I, um, like I said, that's really all I got to say about this book. I think you guys should check it out, and I think it's going to be, it's very informative read, um, in a really fun way. And it's a very, it is a bit of a disturbing book. Um, but I mean, it's, it's good. It's worth the read. So I hope, um, so if you liked hearing my thoughts on Animal Farm, then please give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate it. And love to all my people that are already subscribed to me. Alright. Bye.